I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I want to address what is probably one of the, if not the most common question that I hear coming from new people who are new to prepping here. And that question is, how much food do I need to survive what's coming? Well, in this video, what I want to talk about is the answer to that question, but I want to come at it from a little bit of a different perspective because I think you're, you're asking the wrong question if you are asking how much food is enough. I think really the question you need to be asking is how much food would be too much? And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. First, kind of a, a, an analogy to something. Uh, not, here in uh, America, certainly, uh, we have an enormous issue with uh, you know, health issues, obesity issues. And I'll see a lot of people walking around with these little Fitbits, uh, you know, wristwatches. They like count heartbeats and you know, steps or whatever else they, they do. And uh, I'll, I'll always hear people that are, are very clearly not in very good health. Uh, saying things like, well, I, I just want to make sure I get my steps in for today, and like they're, they're checking their watch to make sure that, you know, whatever they were told they needed to get for steps, that they, they do that amount. They, they're looking for whatever that bare minimum was. It's like, you need, I, I don't even know what it is, 10,000? I, I have no idea. But it's like, you know, okay, I've gotten 10,000 steps in for the day, so, so I'm good, I'm healthy now. Uh, clearly, that's not working for most people, <laughs> doing that kind of bare minimum. And it's kind of the same situation with, uh, you know, emergency preparedness in food. You know, I, sometimes I, I want to say to these people that I see, that I, I would never do it, it'd be totally impolite. But what I want to say to these people when they're, they're talking about like, uh, you know, I just want to make sure I get my steps, is like, you know, stop looking at your watch. There is absolutely no danger that you're going to get too many steps today. So just be active, get out there, start walking, start jogging, start doing whatever, and, and stop looking at the metrics, stop looking at the data. You're in absolutely no danger of going overboard. I mean, clearly, by, by looking at you, you, you got light years between you and what would be too much. So it, it really is kind of the same thing for people who are new into prepping and food. But, you know, people will be saying, like I said, uh, you know, how much food do I need in order to survive what's coming? And uh, for people who are just starting out, don't worry, you are in absolutely no uh, danger of having too much anytime soon. So what I would suggest to people is don't worry about how much food you need to survive and just start getting food. You know, don't worry about the, the metrics, don't worry about the data, don't worry about the numbers or any of that kind of stuff. The only metric you need to worry about is how much disposable income do I have and that's the end of it. Figure out how much disposable income, income you have and start spending it on food that is going to be shelf stable. Now, if you're going to be buying you know, two uh, truckloads of bananas with that food, that's, that's a poor decision because bananas are not shelf stable. You're going to have to eat, be eating a lot of bananas in a really short time span. Uh, that's going to turn into a disaster. But for things like dried rice, dried beans, uh, you know, flowers, you keep those, uh, by flowers, I don't mean cut flowers, I mean like you know, grains, you know, wheat flour, uh, uh, that, that type of thing. You keep that stuff in a cool, dry, a dark environment and it is going to last for years and years. I'm using flour today for making, actually I made some pizza dough this morning and the flour that I pulled out for that is five years old. It, it, flour can go rancid, I've heard anecdotally over time, but uh, five-year-old flour doesn't. So until you get to a point where you have like, I've got five years worth of food or you know six years worth of food, you don't really have to be worried about like going overboard. If you think about it as kind of a continuum, this is having no food at all, and you're getting more and more food stacked up, and then you get to a point where you get into that sweet spot, that region where you're entering where you have enough for whatever the future might hold, and nobody knows what the future might hold. That's the other kind of question mark that we have that nobody has the exact answer to. You know, and when you're asking the question, uh, do I have enough, you're asking, have I gone from not having enough to just passing that threshold into having enough? That's kind of a uncomfortable place to be in because you go a little bit to the, well, there's my right, your left. You go a little bit to the left and suddenly you have plenty, you know, you get enough. You go a little bit to your right and suddenly you're starving to death. That's an uncomfortable place to be in. You want to be somewhere in this continuum between having enough and having too much. I would much rather you ask the question, how much is too much? Because this is a much more comfortable place to be in than this. 
Here, the danger is I have too much and some of my food spoils. Here, the danger is I have too little and I die, or I, you know, I, my family's starving to death. I'd rather be worrying about having some food spoiling than worry about worrying about having my child starve to death. So if you're just starting out on the journey to prepping, forget all that stuff about like, you know how much is too much. Or no, no, I'm just invalidating my own idea in the video. Don't forget all the questions about how much is enough. Uh, you know, don't count calories. Don't count family members. Don't. Uh, you know, be uh, you know wondering about you know you know what is going to happen. You are in no, you are in no danger of having too much. So at this point, find out how much disposable income you have that you're willing to devote to this, and just start buying food. At the very least, even if there is no disaster in the future and things always continue, uh, you know, and rosy and rainbow, uh, you know, for the rest of your and your children's natural lives, which is incredibly unlikely. But let's say that happens. One thing that we are seeing is the cost of fuel is going up. Uh, the cost of food, uh, food as a result, and for many other reasons, is going up. So even if you buy food now, that there is no emergency, and you never need to really rely on it for that uh, purpose. Even if you're just buying food now before the food goes uh, food goes up in price, you're saving yourself money. It's like getting everything on sale, getting buying everything with a coupon. And how is that bad at all? So forget about how much is enough, and don't worry about any of that stuff. Years from now, you can worry about, well, man, I think I might have too much. You know, you can worry about that and later, and that's not a bad problem, that's not a bad situation to be in. But for now, just start getting what you can, because you don't have to worry about not having, you don't have to worry, you do not have to worry about having too much. Right now, what you have to worry about is not having enough, and you're in no danger of getting too much at this point. So start buying food now, shelf-stable stuff, Dried rice, dried beans, flour, uh, things in cans, uh, you know, last a long time. Sardines, great source of protein. Uh, the Even just the expiration dates on those say they're good for 10 years, and I've had them, uh, you know, way beyond that. Just start getting st shelf-stable stuff now. You don't have to worry about having too much. Just start buying. That's it. Good luck. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.